Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for May 3rd, 2021. It's the time of the week where we, get to, where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is sponsored primarily by Adafruit. So if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. If the meeting's time is changed, we'll mention it on Discord. We can also, um, if you want to be notified about changes, we can also add you to the CircuitPython, CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. There is a calendar available that we also keep updated if you prefer to subscribe to that. There's a link in the notes document. This meeting is recorded. We record audio from the voice channel and video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you're still welcome to participate by just listening in or providing notes. This meeting uh, will be posted to YouTube and the audio-only version released as a podcast. If you find we're not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. As I mentioned earlier, there is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. If you'd like to participate but can't make it to the meeting, that's where to leave your hug reports and status updates. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip to the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, just as a warning. A link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel in the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes document. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news, a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's also a preview of the CircuitPython on microcontrollers newsletter, which comes out every Tuesday. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. It's a statistical overview of the entire project, a chance to look at the project by the numbers. The next part, and the first uh, group uh, participatory part, is Hug Reports, an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing and recognize the awesome folks all around us in the community. After that comes status updates. We invite you to sync up on what you've been up to in the week since uh, we last met and what you hope to get up to in the next week. And the final part is in the weeds. It's an opportunity for a longer form discussion. This can either be something that you uh, identified beforehand or that comes up during status updates but uh, needs, uh, needs more back and forth discussion. And that covers how the meeting will go. I will just click over to the notes document and to the community news. So uh, first off, MicroPython turned eight years old on April 29th. That day in 2013 was when Damien wrote the first line uh, in private before anybody knew about it and before it was even called MicroPython. Now MicroPython is used on many different types of microcontrollers and single board computers in both educational and commercial platforms. Version 1.15 was released two weeks ago with great new features. And as you probably know, CircuitPython is based on MicroPython, so we owe them a big debt. And that's one reason that uh, Adafruit has sponsored MicroPython on GitHub. Adafruit has stocked the official MicroPython board from Damien for a while, and they've also made direct donations to MicroPython to support Damien's work, as well as make and share contributions based on the CircuitPython core on MicroPython. Now with GitHub sponsors, Adafruit, Adafruit provided a $5,000 sponsorship. MicroPython's goal is $5,000 a month, so one full month is on Adafruit. If you use MicroPython, please consider sponsoring as a one-time gift or monthly gift. And companies and organizations can now sponsor, so uh, if you are affiliated with an organization, maybe consider sponsoring from that point of view. Next up, some projects from the community. A Black Panther smart display slash alarm clock. This one uses an Adafruit ESP32-S2 Metro to get a comic cover with the Marvel APIs. It also does weather, calendar, health, etc. coded in CircuitPython. There is a Twitter link. Next, a MIDI controller UI for Pico 8 ENC, hitting the Raspberry Pi Pico's limits, trying to do 8 encoders and NeoPixels in CircuitPython. Links to Twitter and GitHub. 
And uh, next up, the Trinky Dance Party, fun pulsing colors for the Adafruit Neo, Twink Neo Trinky in CircuitPython. Again, there are links to Twitter and GitHub. All right, next, a visual thermometer using Circuit Playground Express and CircuitPython by Stephen Cross on stephencross.com. Then we've got a uh, link to Cognitive Gears module, CircuitPython schedule. It allows the programmer to use a functional syntax to run jobs at custom time intervals. Uh, and I guess there's also a Reddit thread about that one. And finally, I mean, this is not finally for the newsletter. This is finally for what I picked out. The Magic GIF Ball, receive random advice, but with GIFs instead of text. In the notes doc, you'll find links to Hexter.io, the Element 14 community, as well as a video on YouTube. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub, link in the notes doc, and submit a pull request with the change. You can also tag your tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And Anne is kindly correcting my pronunciation of GIF. It's the Adafruit style that it's pronounced with a hard G, but I was educated wrong. I'm sorry, Anne. I failed you. All right, moving on <laughs> uh, to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So as I mentioned before, this is uh, aims to be a statistical overview of what is going on in the project first overall, and then divided into our main components of the core libraries and Blinka. So overall, in the last week, we had 88 pull requests merged from 28 authors. And some of the names that are less familiar to me are Jay Raber, Riza Almanda, um, Slutsky, S. Light, and Zap Wizard are names that uh, I don't immediately recognize, so thank you to our new or um, irregular contributors. Thank you to all the authors. Uh, thanks also to 17 reviewers, which I think uh, is our biggest number yet, the biggest number I remember seeing, and I know some of those folks are new, newer. So anyway, thank you to all of them. With everybody's help, we were able to close 29 issues by 17 people, with 22 new issues opened by 19 people, which uh, is a slight net decrease in open issues. And with that, I will pass it to Scott to tell us about the core. Hello. Just sc scrolling down because I'm slacking. <laughs> so for the core, uh, 30 pull requests merged from 22 different authors. Uh, thank you to all our authors. Uh, that's awesome to see. Uh, thank you to our 11 reviewers. Uh, awesome to see us break uh, double digits on the number of review reviewers. So thank you to all those folks. Uh, reviewers are the folks that let us scale the number of authors. So thank you, reviewers. Uh, we have 22 open poll requests. Uh, a, number, a couple of those are over 200 days old. So um, if folks want to help out in the core, uh, picking up an abandoned pull request is really helpful. Um, I, there are a few that are pretty old, but are like quite close to being ready. Uh, but just have, I haven't personally had time to pick them up. So if you're, if you're curious, uh, adopt a pull request and, and help us get it in. Um, issues wise, we had 10 closed issues by seven people and seven open by six people for a total of 443 open issues. Um, and we triage those issues by uh, attaching milestones to them. So we have five active milestones currently. We have 56 open issues on 7.0, which is going to be our next major stable release. We'll do minor stable releases in 6x still. We have two bug fixes, uh, two issues marked for 6x bug fixes right now, um, and we have two issues not a mile, not assigned a milestone. So we'll have to take a look at those later. And uh, that's the gist of the core. Uh, we're continuing to merge and. Uh, Things are 
thank you to everyone who's been testing main. All right. Next, I will pass the baton to Katni to give us the library update. Thanks. All right. So we had 57 pull requests merged by 10 different authors, uh, which is excellent, and 12 reviewers, which is doubly excellent. More reviewers than authors. Great to see. Um, I want to uh, highlight one particular PR, the TLC 59711. It was uh, 841 days old. It was the longest standing PR that we had. And um, the author stuck with it and made it through a lot of different library changes um, and conflict merges and all kinds of stuff to get that feature in. And now you can chain two of those wards together uh, using the library, which is amazing. Um, so let me scroll down this huge list of merged pull requests. It is a big list. All Was right, there and then we a, had like a global editor or something this week. No, there wasn't. Oh. It's all documentation updates from Jose David, um, which is amazing. We we have not done CI updates in a bit here. Um, I will talk about that in just a minute. Uh, so we had that leaves us with fifty six open pull requests, the oldest of which is now five hundred days old. Um, so uh, we had fifteen closed issues by nine people and fifteen open by fourteen people. So we are net even at three hundred and twelve open issues. Six of those are labeled good first issue. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all this information and more, um, open pull requests, open issues, and library infrastructure issues. Uh, the open issues, you can search by label. Good first issue is an excellent uh, place to start if you're new to everything, or a bug or enhancement is something if you're looking for something a little more complicated. Um, Feel free to comment on the issue that you're picking it up and uh, have at. Um, with PRs, if you have the hardware, please test. If you, um, my cat is making an appearance. Um, if you have the hardware, please test it. Otherwise, take a look at syntax, take a look at uh, spelling, that sort of thing. Whatever it is you can contribute to reviewing a PR is uh, super helpful to us. Um, and uh, let's see, so in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had two new libraries, the OV7670 and uh, CircuitPython Morse code in the, in the community bundle. The first one is a Adafruit CircuitPython library. The second one is a community bundle library. And now I'm scrolling down to my overall. Um, so we finally saw our oldest library PR to completion, thanks to Slight for the perseverance through so many library changes over that time. Um, I'm excited to see the documentation updates and older PRs and issues being picked up. Thank you to everybody who's been contributing. And thank you to our newest reviewers for joining the team. Um, again, uh, the best way to start reviewing is to just comment on PRs that you've taken a look at it or tested it. And once you're more comfortable, we can level you up to actually joining our review team, um, at which point uh, that enables us to, uh, as Scott mentioned, scale more authors and uh, do a lot more development. And that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you, Katni. And that was not the button I meant to press. All right. Uh, so as Melissa can't join us today, I will read the section about Blinka. Blinka is the CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. I think that's how the spiel goes. And last week there was one pull request merged from one author and one reviewer, leaving eight open pull requests, the longest of which has been open for 1,794 days, they've got you beat, Katni. Um, there were four closed issues by four people and no opened issues, leaving 60 open issues. There's a link to the Adafruit Blinka issue tracker in the notes document. The number of PyPI downloads in the last week was 7,997, a lovely palindrome, and the number of supported boards is 72. And that brings us to Hug Reports. We'd like to give you a moment to acknowledge the people in the community around us who are doing good stuff. Whether it's a project that they put up, some help that you got on Discord, whatever it is, um, highlight the positive. So I will start off by uh, being among those who wants to thank Jose David for the continuing work on so much documentation stuff. Documentation often doesn't get give love, but at Adafruit we think of it as one of the things that distinguishes um, the way we do things is we show you how to how to use it. Uh, I want to thank Scott for the ongoing work on the MicroPython 
merges. Um, there is a lot of work there, and although a couple of things slips, a couple of things slip through. I know Scott is figuring out a lot more um, in the pull request before it goes to the rest of us to test with. And thank you to Foamy Guy for a thing called the Library Screenshot Maker. We are going to incorporate that and use it to improve the Learn system. I'm pretty excited about being involved in that a little bit. And thanks to Dan for the USB descriptor stuff, um, which I'm sure he will talk about in his turn. And I will pass it now to Jerry and then read notes from Jose David. Hi, thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, thanks uh, also to Tanut and everybody else who's been involved in all the painstaking merges of MicroPython. Um, it's a, an amazing effort. And Jeff, thanks to you for the quick fixes last week to the um, issues that came up in 7.0 with the Sam B21 and the pixel buff. Nice to have those working again. All right, happy to help. Uh, I will read notes from Jose David, and then Katni is up after that. So uh, Jose David has a hug report for Katni. Re our discussion about the community library list and finding that it is already in place. It'll just need tweaks later. To Red M for their contribution to the MCP 23S XXX library. To GitHub user Adam Candy for fixing the I2C lock problem in the SSD 1306 and their help with the code. A hug to Hugo for accepting to collaborate on the dashboard project. And to the whole t to at team, I'm not sure if that just means everybody, to add the DHT library to the core. All right, Katni, you're next, and then Kmatch. All right, so my first hug report is to Jose David for the continued documentation updates and the reason why our list of uh, updated libraries and merged PRs are so long in the notes above. Um, to Dan for dealing with the old CircuitPython daily reports. Um, the list was getting quite lengthy and the way that it was ordered changed, which put our current reports in a really weird spot. Um, so thank you for at least dealing with that uh, temporarily. Uh, to Foamy Guy for the project library screenshot generator that uh, Jeff mentioned. And to Slate and Foamy Guy for finishing up the oldest standing library PR um, at 871 days, I think it was. Um, there were some very significant changes to the library during that time uh, between um, regular you know, code PRs and all the CI updates that we've done. Um, and the original author, S. Light, uh, stuck through all of it, um, dealt with all the merge conflicts, dealt with all the updates. Um, and Foamy Guy did a lot of the testing and uh, the back and forth there was was really great and it was great to see that um, everybody stuck with it and now that useful feature has been added to that library. Um, so I know this is probably the third time I've mentioned it today but it's worth mentioning and I'm very excited um, to see that that continued through and um, that we got it added. All right, uh, Kmatch is up and then it will be Scott. Okay. The first hug goes to Foamy Guy for fixing the, the documentation, building, and read the docs for the new Circuit Python GitHub organization. Uh, thanks for doing that and getting it all hooked up and working. Uh, thanks to Jose David for all the documentation fixes, as well as uh, new ways of or highlighting new ways of organizing. So maybe uh, it'll be easier to find some of the detailed documentation within that the read the docs folders. Um, and then last, thanks, Jeff. Thanks to you for all the new graphics ideas for how to handle images and how to process them both inside of CircuitPython and the, with the MicroLab. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, all right, Scott is next. Then I have notes to read from a couple of people at the beginning of the alphabet. Hello. Two hugs for me today. First, a hug report to Kmatch for work, continuing work on the tiny logic friend which is a really uh, hopefully universal uh, firmware for all sorts of microcontrollers that allow for logic analysis, using them as, as, as a logic analyzer. Uh, the progress you're making is really great, so keep it up. And then a uh, hug report to Jeff uh, for helping me through test fixing the test fixing phase of merging 112. Uh, there was a lot of tests that needed uh, help, so thanks to Jeff for helping me get through that slog and also uh, going back and fixing some of the stuff I missed in previous merges as well. Really appreciate it. 
All right. Uh, I have notes from Anik Data, who has a hug report to me for patient help on shared binding enums. I'll get there. And Anik Data, I am here to help you uh, next time you want to talk about it, so just at me. Uh, next hug report from Anik Data is to MicroDev1 for the auth mode class and integrating it into Access Point. And finally, a hug for uh, Jose David for testing the ethers. All right, then I have notes from C. Grover, and after that we'll go on to Dan. So C. Grover has a hug report for David Gloud and V923Z for inspiration and exceptional coding examples. Uh, all right, tell us what's up, Dan, and then I will read notes from David. Okay, uh, so as Scott reminded us, uh, thanks to Damien George for MicroPython on its eighth anniversary. Uh, without MicroPython, I would not have this job. There we go, this wonderful job. Um, thanks to MicroDev, who's been doing some core circuit Python reviews, which is really helpful because there are a lot of them to do. Uh, thanks to Jerry and Deshipu for testing 620 and main on various boards and finding problems which we needed to know about. So thanks a lot. And thanks to Lady Ada for some discussions over the weekend uh, when it became clear that we really needed to make some space on boards because of adding dynamic USB descriptors. And we, we thought we could get rid of Pulse IO on the smallest boards based on what it is and isn't used for. Okay, I'll talk about that later as well. All right, uh, I will read the notes from David Gloud, and then after that, it's Foamy Guy. Uh, but David has a hug for Seagrover for discussion about thermal cameras and to V923Z for providing a very simple piece of code with Microlab Array Splice Magic to do bilinear X2 image enhancement. I will need to scroll back and find that, assuming it was in the public channel. All right, next up is Foamy Guy, and then Higher Effect will get to round out the section. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, first hug this week goes out to Hugo uh, for saved me a, a bunch of time, untold time and frustration by uh, pointing out a particular issue I was having, which was it turned out to be related to UTF, I guess, byte order mark. Uh, this was not something I was familiar with, but it was causing trouble with a script that was reading a file. Uh, and Hugo figured that out and pointed it out and saved me, again, uh, tons of time and frustration. So big thanks there. Um, thank you to Katni for getting PyPy uh, integration set up on the CircuitPython org. Um, thank you to you, Jeff, for your improvements and working to integrate uh, with CI, the, the screenshot utility that I worked on. Thank you to uh, Jose David for uh, tons and tons of great uh, updates across many different libraries, updating documentation and examples uh, and all sorts of things. Uh, Jose has been doing tons of great work, so I really appreciate that. And then, uh, um, Last one I have written here is to s uh, uh echoing what Katni said, just uh, thanks for sticking with that long PR and uh, getting that finished up. And it's really cool that we can now chain uh, multiples of those PWM drivers together. And then uh, I will add one more that I forgot to put in the list here that goes out to Scott. Um, it's been really fascinating to see the, the see you work on the, um, the merging of MicroPython in, on your deep dive. So thanks for, uh, thanks for kind of peeling back the curtain and letting us uh, see that. That's all for me, thanks. All and right. thank you to Katni for writing that one in, sorry. <laughs> all right, last up, Higher Effect. Well, I put down group hug, but really it's a group hug, especially for the, the core team, because uh, I had a bunch of different questions. And so you and Dan and and uh, various other people helped pitch uh, this past week. So thank you to all you folks for your help on just those miscellaneous issues. And uh, that's for me. All right, thank you, everybody. And with that, we will move on to status updates. During status updates, we want to hear what you've been up to relative to CircuitPython since the last time you were able to check in and what you hope to get up to in the coming days. Uh, so I will start, and we will go in round robin in a similar fashion to hug reports. So finding my own notes. Last week, I published the library Adafruit OV7670, which is the setup library for this digital camera that I've talked about a number of times recently. And you do need to run that with CircuitPython 7 and only a couple of supported boards, but it's pretty cool. I also worked on some test failures and bugs due to the MicroPython merges. Um, I guess the 
The most interesting one of those had to do with magic numbers and how they're encoded in MPY files, and I, I got to learn a little bit more of the CircuitPython internals as I worked on that that I hadn't seen before, so that was fun. And I have started working on integrating the library screenshot maker into Learn. Um, now that we have Bundlefly, it's great for um, producing these zip files that show what you will, or the, that hold the files that you need. But uh, the idea is to create screenshots, simulated screenshots of what the file structure looks like in the zip file. And we'll show those in Learn alongside the link to download the zip file from Bundlefly. Um, should be pretty cool, and Foamy Guy did all the hard work. I just get to do a little integration. Uh, so this week, I hope to finish that integration, continue helping with issues arising from the MicroPython merges, although there may be a short respite from that. Depends on Scott's pace of working. And the thing to really get back to is to start on the image capture module support for the ESP32-S2 so that uh, we'll be able to run the cameras on those boards as well. And nicely, the uh, ESP32-S2 Kaluga development kit has the proper header just built in, so um, that's nice. You don't have to wire up anything. All uh, right, so that's what I've been up to. Uh, Jerry is next, and after that, I'll read notes from Jose David. Yeah, well, well lots of scattered little projects, but um, just mostly been trying to check out the 7.0 as it as it as it evolves on as many different boards as I can just to see what's working, what's if anything's not. So all been all been good. All right, uh, and just to briefly interrupt myself, uh, Dylan, if you do plan to have status updates, then just put uh, a, at least put your name, if not your notes, in the doc document at the right point, so that when I come back, uh, I will call on you. But now I'm going to read Jose David's notes. Last week, library documentation, a design guide update, discussion on the widget control design philosophy, a new example using scale color in the progress bar, and refactored my Morse code library from MicroPython to CircuitPython, now in the community bundle. This week, maybe doing some graphics and working on the dashboard project with Hugo. All right, next is Katni, and then after that is Kmatch. All right, so last week I published my final newsletter. Uh, that was <clears throat> an interesting stint, but I am very happy to hand that back over to Anne. Um, I published the Itsy Bitsy RP 2040 guide, uh, subsequently fixed the Itsy Bitsy RP 2040 board definition in CircuitPython. So note, um, use the absolute newest version of CircuitPython with your Itsy Bitsy RP 2040 to have everything work properly. There was one pin that was incorrect, and the um, the little built-in LED and the button pins were were both wrong as well. Um, so everything is is now fixed, um, but it's in only the latest. So be prepared for other bugs, but um, you know if you want your pins to work, <laughs> use that. Um, added all the existing templates to the Funhouse guide, and then created a spreadsheet for a template page checklist. Uh, it includes all of the CircuitPython board guides. It is depressingly huge. Um, but the plan is to start with the most recent boards and work backwards for adding um, all the new templates to the guides. So unfortunately, that spreadsheet is only going to grow with more templates as I add them. But, you know, we needed some way to keep track of where things were because, hey, did this guide get that? I don't know was not a good uh good way of tracking things. Um, this morning I got through all my guide feedback. There's a link on Learn Guides that says feedback or corrections, and it goes into a, a backend system that we can access. And so any board or any, you can search based on the guides that you wrote. And um, that has been something that I haven't kept up with as well as I should have. And also the newsletter um, kind of took up quite a bit of time until um, this week. So this morning I went through all my guide feedback. So that was good. That's empty now. Um, this week, the first thing I'm going to be doing after this meeting is trying out the new uh, pretty pinouts diagram stuff. Um, trying to get that running locally. We've got uh, something that uh, Lamore put up on GitHub that um, I'm going to be trying. And then next after that, 
uh, is, to, and I'm going to be making pinout diagrams for the RP2040 boards. Um, then the next one is to get all the current templates into the rest of the RP2040 guides. ItsyBC has all of them, but Cutie Pie and Feather do not. And then continuing on with um, templating the rest of the Essentials guide. Uh, the plan is to turn that whole guide into templates and then add all those templates to uh, the board guides. So that's a huge project that will have a lot of stuff happening in between it, but um, that's the eventual plan. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, Tenet is on deck, but now tell us what's up, K-Match. Okay, thanks. So uh, this, most of this past week, I've been focused on the tiny logic friend logic analyzer. Uh, and uh, just want to mention, it's kind of outside the scope of pure circuit Python. So I won't be offended if I shouldn't be given too many updates here. Uh, so just let me know. Uh, but right now I've got it where it's uh, uh, connected to an itsy bitsy M4 and I can measure 11 of those pins. Uh, and it, if it was available, I could measure 16 channels. Uh, it's not super fast uh, the way it's written right now. I can measure a hundred kilohertz signal but that might be good enough for, for some folks to get started. And I think there's plenty of room for improvement. Uh, and I'm sure folks can find ways of, of speeding that up if need be over time. Um, mainly now, I want to try and get a first cut where folks might want to look at it. Uh, and that means cleaning up the file structure, add some documentation, and organize it so that boards can be added easily to it. Um, and then really the question is, what's where where should this be going? Uh, I know that on the live stream from Scott uh, that uh, Lady Ada had put together some hardware. I'm not sure if that's the same direction we want to go with that or if it needs testing. Uh, also, I could work on better performance for the Cortex M4s uh, and some other options, depending upon different boards may want to do run length encoding or pure straight sampling. So I want to decide whether add a flag for that. Uh, and also inspired by what Lady Ada showed on her stream last night, uh, I can probably extract uh, for any given chip all the pin names from the existing CircuitPython pin.c files. So I may want to look at that, how to make it easy to easy generate a lot of, lot of uh, 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 I guess, UF2 files to run this code on a bunch of different boards that are there in the CircuitPython organization. So, And then last, uh, there's existing work from Mark Gamblor and GitHub user MarkB139 which is a pretty good example of, of a, a logic analyzer using the RP2040. And I think it's really fast too. So I might consider that as sort of the next thing of getting their code tied in with this. So that's what I got this week. All right, that sounds like plenty. Uh, I'll hand it to Scott and then we'll head back to the beginning of the alphabet. Awesome, thank you, Jeff. So more merging, not, shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> um, 112 is passing CI and Dan's reviewed it. So one of the first things I'm going to do this afternoon is get back to Dan on that. Um, should be pretty quick. I think it's mostly just name name stuff. So I uh, should get 112 in today or tomorrow. Uh, I started 113 last week and I have 99 files left to merge. So I'm hoping to get through that today and then getting everything compiling is the next step. Um, once I get to the point where I'm hunting down test problems, I'll probably rope in Jeff unless Somehow there aren't any, <laughs> or there aren't very many. So uh, we'll do that. And then uh, we'll have, after 113, we'll have two more left, 14 and 15, but they should be smaller. Um, so it shouldn't be as bad, hopefully. Um, besides that, I'm working with Trevor on getting the iOS side of the BLE workflow going using the test Python code. And then I'm also working on slides for the Python Language Summit next week, which is a it's a private uh, get together of Python core developers, and I'm giving a lightning talk, so it's five minutes um, on how Circuit Python is a subset of C Python, meant to be uh, informative for the C Python developers as they there's kind of been some discussion about whether C Python should actually be kind of a smaller thing and uh, and have less kind of built in stuff. So. Um, I, I wanted to just use CircuitPython and MicroPython as a as a, an example of what that would look like or what that could look like. Um, uh, since it's private, what I'll plan on doing is I'll just I'll just show it off on uh, my stream on Friday, just like I did for the Open Hardware Summit as well. Uh, so that's not this Friday, but next next Friday I'll show it off there. Cool. 
Uh, next, I have got the notes from C. Grover, and after that, it will be Dan. Uh, so C. Grover successfully implemented algebraic and microlab-based bilinear interpolation methods for CircuitPython, with lots of help from David Cloud and V923Z on the microlab version. Tested with an 8x8 eight eight to 15x15 15 15 thermal array image on PyPortal. The implementation needed all of the Python, all of the PyPortal's 256k memory and 120 million hertzes. Developed an analog iron spectrum, grayscale, and visible spectrum to RGB converter helper. Input is a floating point spectral value from 0 to 1. Output is a 24-bit RGB tuple. Continued development of the dual load cell espresso scale. Developed PyBadge slash Gamer, Clue, and Portal versions. Next up, finish the 2x thermal camera port to Pi Portal. Submit PR for invisible display IO touchscreen buttons. Submit PR to change default of Adafruit motor, DC motor, from coasting mode to braking mode. Complete the DRV8830 I2C motor controller breakout PCP design and first version of device driver. And unrelated, need to wrap up the final few of the 50 plus illustrations for the book publishing deadline next week. Uh, after we hear what is up from Dan, I will read notes from David, but go ahead, Dan. Okay, so the big news I is I finished um, the first, the initial PR for dynamic USB descriptors um, that lets you turn um, enable or disable um, CircuitPy, the mass storage device, the serial devices, MIDI, and something else I forget. But I think, uh, and also let you specify a list of HID devices. And um, so you can either specify some pre, uh, predefined HID devices or um, specify your own. So you can make up your own gamepad or a joystick, which is people have been resorting to um, custom builds for until now. So um, Scott's reviewing the PR. There's some questions he has about the API. I'm happy to entertain. And I tested it. It seems to work fine. It is definitely, uh, it's not, I was hoping that it would be quite small. It's not quite small. It's about 3,000 bytes, uh, of which about 1,000 is the API, and the other is distributed among various other things. But um, a, a lot of the code that was done at compile time is now being done at runtime, so it has to go somewhere. Um, one thing that next thing is very simple uh, for 7.0, we said we were going to remove PWM out from Pulse.io because it's in its own PWM IO right now. And Scott just merged that. Thank you. Um, the other thing related to dynamic USB descriptors is that in order to make room, we decided to make um, remove Pulse.io on the smaller, smallest boards, like uh, the non Express SAMD21 boards. And we were there are a few cases, Pulse.io is not used very much. It is used for DHT humidity sensors. Maybe we need to write a small special purpose library for those because they have their own unique one wire-ish kind of protocol. Um, that wouldn't be very much code. So, and Scott also reminded uh, us during a meeting before this that well, we can also shrink things because the uh, a low-level library that GCC includes with every build is not compiled in the smallest possible way. And if we do that, we save several thousand bytes. So that I'm going to look at that too. I'll put that in the notes in a minute. And then after I do all the dynamic USB stuff, there are a number of outs uh, bugs outstanding for 6.2 and for 7.0 that need to be fixed. So I'll work on those. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I will read notes from David, and then Dil uh, Dylan is up after that. Uh, so David uh, will be checking in with Seagrover, the options for the thermal camera with interpolation, testing the bilinear 2, 3, and 4 times image enhancement using microlib array slice and simple arithmetic based on V923Z's code, uh, on the mini SAM M4 and Circuit Playground Bluefruit, checking memory versus speed, and various ways to limit temporary matrices with Microlab, the thermal camera with bilinear 4 and 5 times interpolation, 
plus pixel doubling with display IO. There is a Twitter link in the notes document. And non circuit Python got my first vaccine dose with unusual sleep time in the next two days. All right, Dylan, you are up. And then after that is Foamy Guy. Nice to see you. Hey, um, so is it okay if I just like do my hug reports now? Cause yeah, please I do. Arrive. Thanks. Um, yeah, so massive hug report to uh, Katni and Ann. They know why. Um, then a uh, huge hug report to uh, Jose David M for all the contributions he's been doing on uh, GitHub. Um, I Last week I opened my email and I was astounded at <laughs> how many pull requests he had opened, um, which is awesome. Uh, then a group hug. Um, so... On to status updates. Um, been working on a sort of like Funhouse IoT hub, which I'm super excited about. Um, it's been looking really, really promising. Um, then finals, um, not excited about that. Um, I think they start like this Saturday, so really, really not looking forward to that. Um, then another thing, um, this might be better for like in the weeds, but um, I was just kind of wondering why. I get auto reloads in the serial console. Um, yeah, and that's it. All right. Um, unless somebody wants to jump right in, I think better to hold that for in the weeds um, and go on to Foamy Guy. All righty. Got the wrong button there. Okay. Um, for. Can hear you. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, for last week, um, I was uh, working on that library, uh, the requirement screenshotter uh, has too many names and I keep changing them up. So um, eventually that will go in the learn guide repo and the name will be less important, which will be nice. But um, I was working on that and uh, it can now do screenshots for all of the learn guide projects. When I had first made it, it was kind of a very manual uh, idea. And my idea was to like type those things in one at a time and then take the screenshot when you're done, uh, which in retrospect is kind of silly, but um, it's come a long way and it can do all of them at once now. So that's really cool. Um, also this past week, I separated a few more of the uh, widgets into their own uh, repos in the CircuitPython org on uh, GitHub. I hooked up uh, read the docs for all of those repos. The, the new ones that I brought over as well as the original ones that I did last week um, are now all up to date with read the docs and they all have uh, releases for inside of GitHub, which made them also release uh, up to PyPy as well. So we're all up to date there. Um, and then the other kind of main thing I worked on last week is I, I needed to learn React.js in a, a specific design editor library. I needed to do this for work. Um, but the way that I found to practice uh, on those skills was by building a server that lets me hook up a Py portal to it. And um, I can kind of design a page with a nice clean like drag and drop interface. That's what this module I'm working on does. Uh, gives you this nice cool kind of canvas designer thing. Um, I can design a page there and my Pi portal will automatically uh, refresh and download the new version whenever I save it. So that's kind of fun. Um, I will. I, sh I started working that uh, over the weekend uh, on that project and I was um, showing that on the stream. So I will. I think stream a little bit tonight on Twitch just to show uh, the finished version of that if anyone is interested in uh, seeing what that looks like now. Uh, when I finished over the weekend, it was not very close to done, uh, but now it actually does a lot of stuff and has a pipe portal hooked up to it. Um, so if anyone's interested, I'll be doing that tonight. Um, other things for this week, uh, moving more of those widgets over uh, to the CircuitPython org, uh, creating new repos for those. Um, I have a couple questions down in the weeds that I would uh, like to get input on before we get uh, too many of them done. And then uh, last thing is I'll be updating some learn guides um, to change references from the older, uh, less used currently, I guess, API of bus IO I2C into the newer one, uh, which is preferred the board.i2c. Uh, Jose has been making a bunch of updates in the libraries with that, and we need to update learn guide code as well. So I'll be doing that this week. That's all for me. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, before we move on, I wanted to mention something that I didn't put in my status updates, which is that I put in a PR to remove all those byte order markers from the PY files in the learn repo. I don't know whether you saw that go by, but you mentioned it in your hug reports that it was a thing that had vexed you. Yep, excellent, thank you. 
All right, with that, we'll let her effect round out the status updates section. All right, so this past week for me was uh, a just mostly wrapping up uh, sleep related stuff. Um, so we merged in the NRF 52 uh, power and alarms module uh, this past week. Um, so if you would like some low power stuff to work alongside Bailey, uh, that's where you should go for that. We gave it a shot. Um, I also wrapped up the RP2040 pin alarm. That's going to be a little bit out because we have a number of API changes that go in before it, but uh, it is uh, done and working um, as far as I can tell. It doesn't have sleep alarm yet, so I'm going to be working on that this week. Um, and I got started on some supervisor bugs and some other stuff. I'm, I'm going to be moving into a little bit of, of bug chasing after all of this new uh, sleep stuff uh, goes in. So uh, this week I'll be... As I said, filling out the RP2040 and then uh, going into a supervisor bug, maybe taking over some LED stuff from Scott. Um, and I'll also be uh, doing a comparative po power profiling of all of the different ports that have the new power, uh, low power and sleep code. So I'll be um, putting together some test sketches uh, for each, each port that kind of is a, a typical use case for low power deep sleep stuff. And, uh, and we'll get some graphs up so people can see how much power is gonna be used when they're in those various different modes. Um, and then uh, on my off time, own time, I'm probably gonna be playing around a little bit with TensorFlow Lite this week, um, trying to get back into ML stuff uh, and uh, see if there's a feature for that in CircuitPython. So I've got a whole bunch of old textbooks that I've dug out and I'm gonna try and catch myself up again and get some things to compile. And that's, uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Now we're ready to move on to the next section called In the Weeds. Our opportunity, as I mentioned before, for longer form discussion. And I will just pass these off to the author, or if you're text only, I will read them out. And then uh, if there are any action items, we invite the original author to update the document with what those action items were. So I will pass it to Kmatch to introduce our next topic. Sorry, I was on mute there. Uh, so my first question, I think it relates into what Foamy Guy is going to discuss, uh, but it's related to uh, the transition of some of the libraries over into the Circuit Python organization on GitHub. Uh, so uh, just to comment on my workflow to look for good things to work on or, or things to review, is I typically go to the contributing page on circuitpython.org and look through the list of either open PRs or open issues since it's a good sort of one-stop shop for seeing a lot of the uh, things going on in the libraries. Uh, in contrast, going through the GitHub, uh, I don't know what emails or I forget what it's called, notices in GitHub is, is a little overwhelming sometimes. So I find that going on the circuitpython.org page is, is easy for me to find kind of what's going on and where I might be able to, to contribute there. So the question was, um, is there a plan that those new CircuitPython organization libraries will show up there in those same uh, uh, menus for contributing, pull requests, and open issues pages? Um, so I don't think there's a plan, but not because uh, not because the answer is no, simply because we haven't thought about it yet. Okay. Um, I think it would be fine. Um, to keep things aggregated on circuitpython.org. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, if there's concern about, um, if there's concern about aggregating them so much that they all look like they're in the same place, we can very easily, you know, do a header and have them separated on the page, but um, they can all go in the same place. It's just a matter of um, either getting uh, Adabot or an, another script. Um, okay. To generate that okay all right yeah that that would be useful for me again if yeah, i presume that if the notion was that the circuit python organization would also be flowed into those libraries and some of the community bundle i thought that might be a good one-stop uh, place to see all that action yeah agreed okay all right. As for how to do it, I have no idea how that works. I can't yeah. help there, but maybe it was much uh, a request from my side. Um, that's totally fair. Uh, I'm thinking um, maybe file an issue 
on the CircuitPython org, uh, not not the CircuitPython organization, but CircuitPython-org, the repo for CircuitPython.org. Okay, got it. To be confusing. Um, <laughs> but file an issue there, just uh, recapping this, and that way we've got it in one place and we can work from there. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, Foamy Guy, you are up next. All right. I had uh, just three, uh, I think, what will be relatively quick questions um, about those new repos in the CircuitPython org. Um, in Cookie Cutter, one of the prompts is a prefix. Um, for Adafruit repositories, I think typically we put Adafruit there. My first instinct was to put CircuitPython there to match the organization, but then we end up with uh, doubled up CircuitPython in the name, uh, which I would guess we don't want. So I was just curious, is there anything we should be using as a prefix on those new repos or should we just leave it blank? I think mm -hmm. blank is fine. Okay, that's what I ended up uh, doing on the ones I've done so far. I just don't want to run through a bunch more um, and then go back and change them. So that's good. Um, on similarly, or I guess kind of related on the, the CircuitPython.org repos, um, Will those have a separate bundle, like a new third bundle, or will those go in the community bundle or the Adafruit bundle? Um, and I guess really the thing I'm most interested in is, will it will they somehow be tucked inside of something that the project bundler is aware of so that those can still get included uh, with the Learn Guide project downloads? I guess I imagine there being a CircuitPython bundle. OK. Um, I could be wrong. I, don't, I mean, Scott's more on top of what what is pictured for for this, like what the plan is. Um, I can't speak to whether or not the bundler can be made aware of it, um, but we would need to make a decision on the on the bundles first, oh, obviously, gotcha. before you know going to um, Melissa and Justin or whoever it is we need to go to to talk about making the bundler pay attention. So, Scott, I don't know if you have some kind of overarching plan for this no I, I i agree with you i think okay. i think it should be a new bundle i was thinking about this like i i think the community bundle really is meant to be like like it's a disparate set of people that support something whereas this will be like the circuit by the community supports it collectively okay. yeah um so i think having a new bundle for that is worth it and i you know i would i i would like to see us have systems that allow for multiple bundles so i think it's totally totally good to put time into into making this work cool because uh, okay. you know i have this vision of like ideally we have a lot of people that are doing separate bundles and they yeah, kind of right. all work together cool so um, i think a circuit python bundle um mm -hmm. for the general circuit python um org uh repos um would be the would be the first step there okay cool i will I'd, i'll have to look at the existing bundles and see how the repo uh, is put together, but maybe okay. I'll try to build that repo in the CircuitPython org. Okay. Would it would it be weird to actually use org as it the prefix? So it would be like org underscore CircuitPython underscore with the name. Um, maybe a little weird. No, I don't think that's weird. I think I mean a lot of a lot of I come from Java and a, a lot of right. the you have to have a package name and the the best practice for that is like a reverse URL. So like if right. you own python.org, you would do org.circuitpython. So that makes right. a lot of sense to me, actually. Yeah, I agree with Katni that it's weird, but it's also one of those weird things that happens other places. Yeah. Um, so I agree it's weird, but I think it also could be better than omitting it. I think it could be a bit clearer. OK, well, let's um, plan on that then, because really we need to make that decision like now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Any other thoughts on that? I think it's fine. Yep. I didn't have it, any. It would just, I think that would just clarify it just a bit more. Cool. I will um, work on changing over the ones that are there and uh, the new ones I'll do that way. I'll probably do a new one with that and see what all needs to change. And see if you like it. <laughs> yeah. Because then, um, like, does that mean that the, the like, file name is org underscore whatever the library is that could be weird yeah i think, I I think the um i think would. cookie cutter can probably make that not be the file name though right like i like i imagine that although i guess i don't know whether that would be too i, I don't know whether we can get that granular 
to be honest. Um, it seems like something Cookie Cutter could do, but I, I don't know. <laughs> right. I'll, other, I'll play around with it and see what comes out. The other thing that was occurring to me is in Adafruit organization, I think one of the reasons that the CircuitPython is in the library name is because all of the names were already squatted by the Arduino libraries. Right. And that wouldn't be the case in the CircuitPython organization. So if you had, you know, if you've got a driver for the ABC123, why isn't the the module or the why isn't the Git repo just called ABC123? Why would it be called org CircuitPython ABC123? Mm -hmm. I think for clarity. Okay. Or are you just saying like, but, well, because my thought is like, it makes sense to you when it's in the circuit Python org, but what happens if somebody forks it? Now it's very unclear what, what it is that, that you're dealing with. Cause then it has an org in the name. Well, no, not, that's not, I don't mean when, it, if it has org in the name, I mean, just calling it the module name. Right. Without circuit Python, without without circuit -Python, Python on it. I see. Would yeah. be unclear. Johnny's suggesting putting org after circuit Python. So it'd be circuit Python underscore org underscore the name. <laughs> yeah, I like that. As I, well. I, I like that better. Yeah, the JavaScript thing is kind of weird. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the reverse. Yeah. About JavaScript. If we, if we have a choice now, we can do that since we're not being constrained by a down, a downward hierarchy. Correct. Right. I do we think can... that one will require a tweak in, uh, in cookie, cookie cutter. cutter. I'm pretty I sure. I think it's worth it. Yep. That could that could be what it produces if you give it no prefix. Oh, have it slip the organ if you answered uh, with empty on prefix. Okay, yeah. I like that solution. Um, and the the last one I had here is uh, in the pilot RC that gets generated by Cookie Cutter. There's these two lines. They're in the doc here. They say mm -hmm. "fix me xxx to do," and yep. uh, my IDE catches them because of the to do. Is there? I don't think I've ever changed anything on those. I'm not really sure what they do. Is there something that we're supposed to be? doing with those lines no um what that does is it means that if you put um into some code fix me in all caps with something after it pilot will trigger on it and okay. fail and so the idea is and we took out to do because we wanted to be able to leave to do's in the code well yeah. scott let's be clear <laughs> scott wanted to leave to do's in the code i have um, a story about this too <laughs> so so we took it out but the other two um, will cause pylon to fail. And so you can write some code, put in a fix me, um, forget about it, try to merge it, and you'll you'll find it'll fail and it'll catch it. And that way you can go back and fix the thing you were supposed to fix. I see. It's like, oh, you can use it as a warning for yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or others. Exactly. So that that we just leave those as is. Cool. Um, that was everything I had for today. All right. Let me try that. Okay. We can hear you, David. My microphone. Yes. Um, yeah, so I've not produced a lot of projects since two or three weeks. And then suddenly, for whatever reason, I don't exactly know. And then I started to talk with Seagrover and then with Zolkran. And yeah, starting stuff started to move. And it was all in private message. So that's why you don't find those billionaire stuff. Um, in the chat. Um, but at one point, I had a problem of well, to do the thermal camera enhance trick. You need CPU, memory, and a stemma connector, and a screen. Um, and I was like trying to find out with Seagrover what do we have in stock <laughs> um, to do that. Um, on one side, I wanted to have something that work with existing hardware with the screen so that it's easy for somebody to just get a new sensor and plug that and have a thermal camera. And on the other side, I needed to have the best CPU for that. And I wanted to avoid fighting with memory space because that was really a nightmare. Um, and so, yeah, um, maybe we are missing um, an easy to find list of 
various MCU and the benefits they have. Um, I gave up on the clue and the um, stuff with not a lot of memory. I wanted to go on the Pico kind of stuff, but I was afraid that without floating point or slow floating point, it would be not good for what I need to do. And finally, the Feather S2 was great. And because I've got that keyboard with the Featherwing keyboard, which is almost like a TFT Featherwing, I had everything. But uh, this is kind of a unique combo because I'm pretty sure not so many people have all the piece to reproduce that. So yeah, um, so I've put some ideas there. And I don't know, um, what, like, what MCU would you use for doing that? Um, and why, or, or which MCU you can put more memory because you can solder memory and it's not built in, or I don't know. Cat, any um, I saw. Go ahead. Yeah, in in reference to the cameras, uh, from the standpoint of. Uh, 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 hooking it up to an MCU, I have a I have a uh, an e ESP32 cam, which has a number of pins in addition to the camera. And it seems to work fairly well, so there must be a way to do it with the 30 uh, S2, the uh, 32S2. Remembering that it, the S2 has has access to the free toss, free R toss also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so the S2 is pretty much like that. It's not the same camera that uh, Jeff is working on, and I'm super interested, but I've not fully understand how it works. Here, yeah, the camera produced 24 by 32 pixel, um, but then you have to do to enhance that um, uh, with Matrix and ULab and yeah, you allocate a lot of memory for those uh, final Matrix and temporary Matrix. So, but yeah, uh, Feather S2 is really a killer for me because I don't have to worry anymore. But then the code I do will not work anywhere on a smaller piece, I think. Um, and like, I don't remember what MCU is in the, the kind of thing you sell. The like thing that you sound like you're trying to do seems to me to be uh, wouldn't work on any of the little boards, uh, the smaller boards, because because even simple image processing is very memory intensive. I discovered the hard way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, David, what about the yes. fun house? Um, is it is it an ESP thirty two S two inside? Yes. Then Ooh. then that oh that um okay. What I don't know is that uh, unexpected maker he did put um a lot of flash and a lot of memory. I don't know how much did you put there, uh, but I mean there is space. I, I'm pretty sure there is space. Um, it's the rover module, yeah. so four megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PS RAM. Yeah, I mean the the, the code is there. Uh, if you have the, uh, one of those MLX camera, um, I can try to tune it for that board. I, I don't have it yet, um, and maybe maybe not. I don't know. I'm not sure <laughs> yet. That's just a suggestion. Yeah, I mean, yeah that, that would be it, interesting. It, but... Yeah, it sounds like the Feather S2 is what you want. It sounds like the Feather S2 is what you want. Charles, can you... Yeah, um, yeah um, maybe, maybe there is another... Um, I don't know, because there are fast and stuff like the TNC or the IMX. and So fast is easy. Uh, memory seems to be the problem. Hmm... Yeah, and that's about it. And I, I did not try Bcubic because I mean I I was super happy to have the math 
solved by Zoltran because yeah. <laughs> so I just tried linear interpolation. That's easy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, okay. With memory, so that would be the only one or um well, I was just suggesting it because it's a yeah, or yeah. I mean a ESP thirty two S two with a display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um because some of the um what Lady Ada did with I don't know if she produced that or it was just top secret, but she's got board with a screen on it. Yeah. And a, and and those like on feather format or all and yeah, that's super cool because I mean the idea is to have a minimal set of hardware to get to the result so that it's not a Frankenstein kind of um, <laughs> stuff because I've got a lot of hardware. Um, but yeah, that feather okay. is is top secret. It's not out yet. Don't ask. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's that that there is one with a screen. I'm pretty sure. Um, yep. But okay, yeah. Um, so I will check uh, what's in the fun house. Um, um and see if i can get close to it and maybe a shadow code and somebody else try something like that all right well i think okay. that brings us to the end of in the weeds thanks everybody for joining us for the circuit python weekly meeting for may third 2021 our next meeting will be at the usual time on may 10th next monday and uh, i believe scott will be running the meeting and let me click back to what else i'm supposed to say at the end of the meeting i'm such a professional thanks to everyone who participated if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on all major podcast services. It will also be featured on the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Uh, the meeting time is the usual, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, to be notified about the meeting, any changes to the time or day, you can, all, you can ask to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. You also need to be added to this role if you want to participate, uh, if you want to speak during the meeting. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>